Alright, in this video we're going to look at how to find the least common multiple and this is very helpful when you're adding or subtracting fractions because then we think of it as finding the least common denominator. These first three examples that you see here are going to get the basic idea across and then I will show you how to find one like this where your numbers are much bigger and maybe doing a lot of multiplication in your head is not going to be the best bet. But when I need to find the least common multiple, and I oftentimes do this when I'm finding a common denominator, when I'm adding or subtracting fractions, I want to find the least, the first number that my numbers will multiply into. That's what a multiple is. For example, multiples of five are five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, etc. Multiples of two are two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, etc. Well, when you find the least common multiple, you are finding the first number that they both multiply into. Now, in this case, the LCM of 5 and 2, that is going to be 10, no doubt about it, because 10 will be the first number that 5 will multiply into and 2 will multiply into. And that was pretty cut and dry, right? Well, let me go ahead and throw a strategy out there. What I do is I pick the biggest of my numbers. The biggest of my numbers here is five, okay? So I'm gonna write down the first multiple of five, which is five, but two won't go into that. So then I'm going to write down the next multiple of five, which is 10, and two will go into that. That is the least common multiple. Now some of you may be thinking, well, we can just multiply these things together and find the least common multiple, and that is not the case. You can find a common multiple by doing that, but it might not be the least. Prime example number two, find the first number that three and nine will both multiply into. It is not 27. 27 is a common multiple, but it's not the least common multiple. That's because nine is. Nine is the first number that is a multiple of both three and nine. Check out my strategy again. Take the biggest number you have, we have nine, well, three will go into nine. Nine is a multiple of three. So therefore we don't have to go any further. Nine is the least common multiple. Example three here, we have eight and 12. Now we could multiply eight times 12, that's 96. That is definitely not the least common multiple. That is just a common multiple. So let's take the strategy here. Take the bigger of your numbers. Let's write it down, we have 12. Well, eight won't go into 12. Let's try the next multiple of 12. 24, right? Well, eight does go into 24. 24 is our least common multiple there. So before we jump at that last example that I showed you back at the beginning of the video, let's just do one more to make sure we have this uh, technique drilled home pretty good. Eight and 14, what's the least common multiple? It is not 112. That is a common multiple, but that is not the least common multiple. So writing down the bigger of our numbers, 14, well, eight will not go into 14. The next multiple of 14 is 28. Well, eight will not go into 28. The next multiple of 14 is 42. Unfortunately, eight will not go into that either. Eight times five is 40, eight times six is 48. Be careful there. And then finally, okay, the next multiple of 14 is going to be 56. Hallelujah, we have one. That is going to be the least common multiple, 56. That's the first number that eight will multiply into and 14 will multiply into. So that's one of my main strategies here. Again, picking the bigger of your numbers, writing down multiples of that number until you find one that they all have in common. Now this problem here, you could take the same approach, but look where this could get a little bit out of control. Let's pick the bigger of our numbers. Yeah, we have three of them, that's not a big deal, but let's pick the bigger of our numbers, 36. Well, 36 is not a multiple of eight, nor is it a multiple of 20. So we have to move on to the next multiple, which is 72, because 36 times two gives you 72. That does work for eight, it does not work for 20, so we have to move on yet again. 36 times three is 108. Well, that doesn't work for anything. And as you can see here, this is getting out of control already. So there is another technique. It is far different than what I've explained so far, but I do use this when I have big numbers and I don't feel like doing multiples in my head. Let's take the first number we have here, 36. And what we're going to do here is something called prime factorization. We want to break this 36 up into its prime factors. 
So take any two numbers that multiply to give you 36, such as 9 times 4, 18 times 2, 12 times 3, it does not matter. I'm going to pick 9 and 4. So 9 times 4 gives us 36. Continue branching these things off until you hit some prime numbers. Prime numbers mean you can't break them up anymore. Well, 9 is not prime because we can break it up into 3 times 3. Now 4, 4 is not prime either. We have 2 times 2. But if you look at these numbers we have here, we cannot break these up anymore. Believe it or not, 36 is the same thing as 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. What I just did there is I took the prime factors that I had and I just wrote them out. It don't matter what order you do it, but I like to keep my things organized. And we can check this by taking 2 times 2, which is 4, times 3, which is 12, times 3, which gives us 36. Now again, just for the sake of it, I will come in here and show you. You could have picked 12 and 3. You could have picked anything you wanted as long as it multiplied to give you 36. So the 3, we're done with that one, but this 12 will break up into 4 times 3. Heck, you could have picked 6 times 2. And then we can break up this 4 one more time into 2 times 2. And check out what we got here. We had those same numbers, those same prime factors, 2 2s and 2 3s. As you can see, we got the same thing up here. So my point here is this. It does not matter how you break it up into its prime factors. You will always get the same prime factors if you do it correctly. Let's move on to the 20 now. So some of you may pick 5 times 4. Some of you may pick 10 times 2. It doesn't matter. The 5, we're done with that. The 4, let's break it up into 2 times 2. Therefore, the prime factorization of 20 is going to be 2 times 2 times 5. You can check your work. 2 times 2 is 4 times 5 is 20. Perfect. That's the prime factorization of 20. And then last but not least, we have 8. Well, 8, we can break that up into 4 times 2. Break up the 4 into 2 times 2. Therefore, the prime factorization of 8 is going to be 2 times 2 times 2. And that does give you 8 if you multiply them out. Now, why in the heck am I doing all this? This is a way to find the least common multiple. And you may think that this is a lot of work. But really, it's a lot of mental math if you sit here and think about it. To find the LCM, what you want to come back and do is look at all of these prime factor trees or these prime factorizations. We want to look at all the prime factors in each one and we have to use them the most they occur in a prime factorization. Well, what does that mean? Okay, in this prime factorization, we have some twos and some threes. In this prime factorization of 20, we have some twos and a five. In this prime factorization, all we have is twos. Down here in our LCM, we have to use every single prime factor the most that it shows up in one of these prime factorization trees. Let me explain what I'm talking about. Let's start with the twos. We have two twos in this prime factorization. We have two twos in this prime factorization, but we have three twos in this one. That is the most number of twos that we have in any of these prime factorizations. So I'm going to write down 2 times 2 times 2 because that's the most that we had in any one of these prime factorizations. Now let's move on to the threes. We got two of them in this one. We have none in this one, and we have none in this one. You still got to use it, though. Well, the most that threes showed up in a prime factorization was twice because it didn't show up at all in either one of these two trees over here. We still have to include it, so let's do times 3 times 3. Now let's move on to the other prime factor, which is the 5. And you guessed it, the most that it shows up in any one of these prime factorizations is just one time because that's all that we see it. It didn't show up two or three times over here. It didn't show up two or three times over here. It did not show up at all. But we still have to include it if it showed up in a prime factorization tree. Prime factorization tree, prime factorization, I have a tendency to call these things trees, and I guess you can see why. But now that we have done this, if you multiply all these numbers together, that will be your least common multiple. So let's do that. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 3 is 24, times 3 is 72, times 5 is 360. 360 is going to be the first number that 36 will go into and 20 and 8. That is the least common multiple. 
Now, I don't know about you, but if you take 36 times 20 times 8, 5,760, that is a common multiple, but clearly this is not the least common multiple. 360 is. And just to show you that, if we take 360 and we divide by 36, notice we do get 10, so it goes into it nicely. If we take 360 and divide by 20, we get 18, it goes into it nicely. And if we take 360 and divide by eight, we get 45, it does go into it nicely. Not only that, 360 is the first number that will do that. And there you have it, a quick approach to finding LCMs, very useful when you have smaller numbers. And then we have this long drawn out way, but in my opinion, it's still kind of quick. It's a lot of mental math. And yes, the technique here does take some practice in regards to, you know, picking out the correct number of prime factors. And again, that is just simply picking the most number of twos that it showed up in a tree three times, the most number of threes that we saw in a tree two times, and the most number of fives that we saw in a tree one time. Multiply all that out, you'll always get your LCM, and in this case it was 360. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.